this and you don't want to hear any of this, like I'm not forcing anybody to stay. This is, you know what, everybody expects Breezy to shut up and be kind and always like, always look the other way and never do that. Like, this is my moment. Everybody takes shots at me 24 seven, video after video after video after video after video after video after lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. I can have my moment. If anybody doesn't want to be here, I'm not even trying to be mean. Um, the hypocrisy. So I'm sharing what happened to me in my life. Literally, have you listened to the whole live stream? And talking about how I was horrible before, but like I changed my life. What hypocrisy is happening? I apologize for the redundancy of disclaimers, but it cannot be emphasized enough that the following is a public record and or been voluntarily disclosed by Just Breeze and Today herself on public platforms. I am desperately trying to avoid appearing in a thumbnail that looks like this. The following is only my opinion. It is not a defense or endorsement for any of the creators we'll be discussing. I will be using Just Breezin today, Just Breezin, and Breezy interchangeably, but they are all to describe one person. This video is not intended to malign, harass, or demean. It is to shed light on what I feel is negative behavior against the dual communities of recovery and gore world, two parties that frequently collide in spite or because of each other. When my chihuahua was a baby, she used to try and pick fights with my bigger dogs. She would snap, bark and nip in a desperate attempt to get their attention. When my other dogs would snap back in her general direction, she would immediately recoil in horror and feign indignation, running to the safety of my arms to warn me of unruly behavior. No matter how many times I tried to stop her, she insisted on going back. Eventually though, she learned her lesson. I am not sure the same can be said of our subject. A creator who likes to provoke other creators through incessant content, and in some cases direct interaction, and then retreat to the safety of her platforms when they fight back, bolstering her audience into action to fight on her behalf. And I used to be a member of that audience, going to battle for her. If you're here, you're probably familiar with Just Breezin today. But if not, I will give you a brief summary. Just Breezin today is a reactor who styles herself as a positive, breezy person, hence the handle. She started gaining attention in early 2022 with videos that approached Foodie from a recovery standpoint, as Just Breezin, by her own admission, is in long-term recovery from alcoholism. In the beginning, her approach set her apart from the brash commentary slash reaction community, as she could remain critical without being mean. This approach landed her a loyal fanbase. However, by late spring slash early summer, cracks would begin to surface, when her commentary took on a decidedly more critical tone. I was drawn to her channel due to her sunny nature and perceived kindness. It felt like a safe community where people of similar outlooks and experiences could gather together and feel welcomed. She wasn't there to condemn, but to give nurturing feedback. Her commitment to sobriety was commendable, and many praised her for fighting for the sober life. After a while though, certain patterns began to emerge. Despite having a positive outlook, her comments sections were rife with hostile and negative comments most of which were hearted by Breezy. The only problem was, this was in direct contrast with the positive image she was projecting to her channel, as was her content. Her high-pitched and pleasant voice has been frequently mocked by Foodie, who has often pondered how Just Breezy today could constantly maintain the projection of happiness and positivity while operating a channel that existed almost solely to criticize. Before we continue, I need to remind you of something. The internet is a place where no one has to be and where we willfully choose how and where we spend our time. You and I have consented to spend our time here, but not everyone can make that choice for themselves. 
I am asking you to keep that in mind. In late December 2022, Foodie Beauty would make a depraved community post hurling horrifying statements at Just Breezen today. The community was almost unanimous in its disgust, and many united to speak out. Given the gravity of the statements made, many were surprised when Just Breezen today did this. Her thumbnail, featuring a sensationalized picture fashioned after a breaking news alert, emulated other thumbnails she had created discussing trivial drama in the community, including the show Real Housewives. Why would she use this same format to discuss a horrendous post defaming herself and her family? Breezy has long been vocal in her concern that a younger family member in her life has been used for controversy and content. I will not be showing any social media posts showing this person. I truly believe they have been subjected to enough drama, both by other creators and Breezy herself. She has retweeted and made content out of repulsive comments made about this person, further exposing them to the cruelty and scrutiny of the internet. Just Breezen has poised herself as a mama bear, protecting her cub, and many have viewed her fight to protect as courageous. But as referenced, this is a fight among internet creators, a battle that could have proactively been avoided. After the first alleged docs, there should never have been an opportunity for a second one to occur. The tweets you're seeing were posted in December of 2022. A month after she went on a panel discussing how her family member had been doxxed and she had gone to the police after concerns of safety violations. Why was she allowing a second opportunity for this to happen again? This is a community known for its contentious landscape and personalities that take things in real life far too often. She has dropped into the direct messages of a lot of questionable people and brought her family along for the ride. Breezy has accused many creators of weaponizing this family member, but she herself has used this person for content, including allegedly posting pictures behind a member paywall and for GoFundMe drives. She has frequently accused other people of doxing her and putting she and her family in a position of harm. And while some, like Foodie Beauty, have made despicable comments regarding her family situation, the act of making your own family member content for internet troll drama is just as unsettling. All information obtained by other creators was provided after Breezy had talked about this person on her platforms. In the past, she has made many proclamations of fear and safety, stating she would retreat from public commentary. It would not last long. Just three weeks ago, she made a video talking about the intricacies of her family and her child's father. Why would someone who has claimed to go to the police over concerns of privacy violations do this? Time and time again, she has utilized her channel to make accusations of threats and doxing against other creators, professing to be scared, before going on to make content out of the events and the people surrounding it. It is difficult to understand why a nurturing caretaker would willingly and willfully expose a loved one to further risk and exposure, especially over internet drama. The nature of love is to protect. This leads me to think one of two things. One does not actually feel threatened and are using it for content. Or it is a risk they're willing to take. I will leave you to decide. Is why I'm better than you? You want to know why? Because at least my fucking kids can say I tried. And you should be ashamed of yourself for coming for somebody who actually put in the work to change their whole life around. You shouldn't be judging me. You shouldn't be coming in my DMs. You should be asking me what I did to change my life. And that's the only thing I ever want to hear from you again. The previous clip was from a video titled Shani for Christ Audio Harassing Me, Me Calling Everyone Out, Plus Addressing My Crazy Past Dated February 20th, 2023. In February 2023, Breezy's public alleged arrest records were made known and a creator she frequently reacts to named Shani, had come to relay her sentiments. One of the alleged charges was elder abuse, which we will address shortly. Breezy is responding to Shani's voice memos in these messages. 
It is important to note that the door of dialogue had initially been opened by Breezy, as she had previously reached out under the intention of offering assistance. You know, your your kids were taken away and blah, blah, blah. The first thing that came to my mind is someone's trying to collect information about me. Because that's what people like you do. You pretend you're people's... Shani, I don't want anything from you or anything that you have. Like, anything. I don't want anything from you. I Something told me one day, because I actually have this thing called a heart. Same thing. MFW said horrible things about me. I still reached out to her and said, hey, we don't like each other. I feel how I feel. But if you ever needed help, like, I totally help you find resources. Something told me the same about you. I'm probably the only one, maybe not the only one, but there isn't very many people who are very open and honest saying, hey, I was a mess. I lost my kid. I got her back. I'm probably one of the only people, though, in this reaction community who get, who get it. I lost my kid, too. Not kids. Kid. One kid. Um, and I get it. And it sucks. And despite you being a completely shitty person, I also acknowledge, like, you... You probably felt the same way I felt when I went to rehab. Well, you won't, don't get going to rehab, but when I went to rehab, like I couldn't enjoy myself. At, like there was no pink cloud for a long time because I felt like such a shitty person for having this beautiful child. And here I am in rehab, rehab, missing out on milestones, everything else, because I couldn't get my shit together. So like I acknowledge the few times you're probably not high and loaded, like you probably feel like shit too. And you feel like nobody gets it. Like I get it. And that was me just being a human. And I even told you in the DMs, I said, I'm still going to call you out. This is just a moment of me saying, Hey, I know it must suck. Like here, here's an olive branch as if, if you ever want help, like I can help you find resources, you know? Anyone in recovery knows the inherent risks of telling their story and actively helping other addicts. Along with the stigma comes the very likely risk you may somehow find yourself in an uncomfortable place with uncomfortable choices. Even the strongest of survivors get weak, and for that reason, very few risk leveraging their recovery over another addict's head. Given the nature of many of her subjects, People have long been willing to look past any supposed faults and discrepancies in favor of community camaraderie. It is easy to poise yourself as a hero when the bulk of your commentary is centered around people who have willfully made themselves clickbait. Indeed, many of Breezy's content subjects have long and problematic histories that make most of us recoil in utter contempt. But two things can be true at once. Just because the boat is sinking doesn't mean the house can't be on fire, and chances are you should probably deal with both. We are always going to deal with the bigger perceived threat before conquering smaller ones. Her audience has sheltered her from intrusive criticism, and that is their right. But there is little to validate a person's story without evidence, other than their own word. Foodie Beauty would be one of the first to ask how a person who had an unwavering devotion to positivity and good vibes could also have content almost entirely comprised of criticism and scrutiny. And as much as other people hated to admit it, they would wonder too. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Just Breezen today has long declared herself a victim of silence, her voice suppressed by the community and detractors. A cursory glance at her channel will tell you a different story. In what can only be described as a shrine to other people's misery, the self-proclaimed recovery enthusiast has used her life of sobriety to make content out of addiction and the downfall of others, oftentimes reaching out to these creators with the purpose of helping them become more like her. Her personal vendettas are sheltered in 10 to 20 minute long videos or self indulgent live streams where she paints herself as a long suffering victim who was targeted for her kindness. Anyone who has ever crossed her has been exposed and villainized to an audience of thousands. Because of her perceived kindness, sympathies almost always align in her favor, and it's an easy mistake to forgive if you contrast her cheerful nature with that of someone like, I dunno, Shani. Her proclamations of recovery and love of sobriety are juxtaposed with thumbnails featuring creators in active addiction, with clip art and pictures of wine and beer next to screenshots of inebriated creators. 
Anyone who understands the sacredness of sobriety understands why this is a problem. Additionally, she reacts to creators who are drunk slash high, where she displays trigger warnings and helplines. There is not a single sponsor, recovery counselor, psychiatrist or social worker who would tell you that reacting to this content is a good idea. Anyone encouraging sobriety would not even attempt to commodify addiction for entertainment purposes. Even with trigger warnings, there is little to no reason for anyone in recovery to recirculate this content for frivolous purposes or entertainment. If any of your audience is even remotely in active recovery, I question why you would make this content available to them. She has admittedly reached out to more than one creator in the throes of active addiction, while also confessing she would use them for content. There is a word for it. I won't say it though. Her community section is likewise peppered with self-indulgent posts and proclamations of victimhood, a woman who picked her life up off the ground and is now suffering the wrath of those who find fault. People who want to hold her past against her. Does any of this sound familiar? I am in a mood. You know, Kiwi Farms doxing me didn't piss me off. People talking shit about me and assuming the worst didn't piss me off. Shani for Christ pissed me the fuck off. And yes, I'm cussing tonight. <laughs> to a whole other level, not because I respect her or her opinion. It's literally like, the fuck do you think you are judging me? Like you? you? <laughs> Everything from my past is like 14 years old. Like, I've never been arrested sober. Every time I've been arrested, it's been because I was drunk, okay? Never in my sobriety. I haven't been arrested. That hasn't even been an issue, but everything when I talk about my past, foodie, you need to hear this too. I'm in a mood. I will drag everybody tonight. I swear to God. I swear <laughs> I am in a mood. I'm sorry, God, I shouldn't have used your name in vain, but I am mad and I think you understand. Um, same for foodie. Like when I talk about my past, it's not yesterday. It's not last week. It's not 30 days ago. It's not even last year. Like my past has been dead and buried for a long time. And I've made amends to everybody I need to make amends to. And we've all healed. As I previously mentioned in February, 2023, Breezy's past was brought into the open when Kiwi Farms found her public records. It was revealed she had several alleged arrest records, including one for alleged elder abuse. It is very important to use the word alleged here. Documentation of records does not mean conviction, and all subjects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Nothing I say here is meant to shame, demean, or judge. She stated her past was 14 years ago, but based on the records released, someone with the same name and in the same area, had an alleged six more arrests occur from 2014 to 2015. One of those was for battery, and the other was for battery slash vandalism of $5,000 or more. I am not judging Breezy's past. I am pointing out a documented public record and allegations that betray her narrative. If it's true, it was a dishonest statement and one she used to placate the audience and herself. While eight years ago is still a long time, it is not 14 years ago. And, and I guess me being doxxed was like such a blessing in disguise because I woke up this morning on fire breezy. Like this just gave me more motivation to share my story and show people like what an, what an incredible story, right? A woman who was a complete mess, contributed nothing to society, took and took and took from everybody. People would find me passed out in gutters on their lawn. Like, I was a mess, you guys. I was a mess. I was a complete mess. And I've never denied that on here. But what an amazing story of a woman who lost everything. Her daughter, her house, the love of her life, her family, her dog, her job. I lost it all, you guys. And I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm proud of myself. What an amazing story 
of somebody who everybody thought I wasn't going to live past 30. Do you know my sister said that to me once? She's like, you're not going to live past 30. I'm not going to have a sister later on in life. She would say that to me all the time. People who knew me in my real life gave up on me. I was that person who was never going to get sober. I was that person at a meeting, always the newcomer, always standing up as the newcomer. You knew my name by heart because I was up there every meeting as the freaking newcomer because I couldn't get any time under my belt. What amazing story of a woman who changed her life, got her daughter back, got her family back, has a house to live in, a roof over my head. I have dogs. I'm loved. I'm respected. People in my community love and respect me. I don't take anymore. I give. Anything from my past is just that. It's in my actual past. And I think it says something that people need to realize. I've never been arrested sober, ever, ever, not once. So please take that into mind. And mom, I know you're watching right now, and I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to cuss this much. Um, I'm not going to share in detail what you told me not to share about, but I'm going to say this part, and I think you're okay with it. I didn't kill an elderly person. I didn't beat up on an elderly person. I've shared about my grandpa on here before, and me and him were very close. And before he got sick, he became really angry. Really angry. <sighs> He didn't care who was there. He didn't you. He didn't care. And I just wanted him to stop. And I gave a push and that's it, you guys. I, and I wish it never happened. I wish I wasn't drinking. I'm sharing this because it's going to help somebody. It hurts talking about it. <sighs> My mom told me today when I told her I was going to share this, she's like, please just remember to let them know, like, grandpa forgave you. Grandpa was sorry for his part. And like, I forgive you. We forgive you. We know who you are. Like, you know? So no, I didn't go beating up anybody. I, that's not me. So call me every name in the book. Paint me as a monster. There's more that happened that I will never share because I love that man with my whole heart. And I know right now he's looking down from heaven at me. And I know he's so proud of me right now. And you can't ever take that from me. I have a question for her audience, and I believe it may anger some. I ask that you please listen objectively. If Breezy had been on YouTube 14 years ago, when the platform was still in its infancy, and was actively filming her addiction the same way as many of her subjects, would her justifications be viewed as excusable? Would you tune in for the drama, or to hate watch, or watch through another reactor? Consider the summary of her own admitted offenses, which are the loss of her job, family, child, reputation, and alleged arrests. None of these offenses are any less revolting than the people she is currently condemning. Her only leeway is that she chose to get sober and is telling you her version of the story. There is little to say her subjects won't get clean as well. If they choose to reform themselves, will you give them the same adoration and praise as Breezy? Or would they forever be confined to the status of losers because they chose to publicly document their addictions? Having viewed her through the lens of active addiction, would you have believed any story about change, or would the impression of an inebriated woman who lost everything for her vices forever be imprinted on your mind? The reasons I ask is that there is very little to distinguish her from her subjects, other than her own proclaimed sobriety. If there was a visual spectacle of her downfall like her peers, would her redemption arc be believable? And if Shani, Rev and MFW someday decide to get clean, would they be granted the same mercies? Memories fade, but the visual marker of film forever keeps those memories alive. The only difference between Breezy and her subjects is that they have a camera, and she did not. Breezy did not make a stream addressing the sole issue, her records. She brought another addict into the mix to compare and contrast in an effort to deflect from herself and bring to attention a person we all already know is a mess. 
In this dream, she would emphasize why she was the superior person. I was a bit stumped. She requested leniency and understanding for her drunken arrests, while simultaneously going after another addict in the throes of active addiction. In short, how are Shani and MFW any less forgivable than Breezy? Given what we have seen and what we have been told, Breezy was not in a much better place than the aforementioned people. At the time she was going through her trials, would it have helped if someone in her current position leveraged their victory over her head? This is an honest question. In this stream, she pleaded for people to remember that she was drunk each and every single time she was arrested and asked her audience for clemency. How is the inebriated behavior of Shani and MFW any less excusable than her own drunk and inebriated behavior that inspired her series of alleged arrests? At this point in the video, I think we need to ask a question. Why is Breezy seeking out gratuitous encounters with other addicts on the internet? While I applaud Breezy for her recovery and the transformation of her life, is her content truly transformative? And I don't mean from a copyright standpoint, but from a reflective one. Why has she purposely navigated her online career to seek out these interactions, and is this behavior healthy? She has, both literally and figuratively, channeled her energy into focusing on addiction content for both professional and recreational use. She has purposely sought out content and creators with the exclusive distinction of having active substance abuse issues, and made it her personal mission to interact with them. She is not perturbed that her life may have been disrupted, she is unnerved that a stranger on the internet, one she proclaims to despise, reminded her that in many ways, they are not so different. Breezy lost the moral high ground, and her indignation and outrage is not at Shani, it is at her own reflection. It cannot be overstated that she reached out to this person first, interjecting herself into this person's life, all while making reaction content about them. She had no issues violating their boundaries and privacy, but feels she is above reproach. She, for some odd reason, is acting like these memos were somehow a preemptive move on Shani's part, when in fact, it was a counterstrike. Breezy, for lack of better words, started this. This was not an inevitable collision, this was a completely avoidable encounter that was unnecessary, and one might say, dysfunctional. Why is her most pressing concern centered around a complete stranger on the internet? And why is she seeking unnecessary encounters that could be completely avoided by just logging off? Her absolute indignation at being categorized as the same people she responds to and believing they have no right to question her, after she, by her own admission, lived the same type of life, and took a very long time to get clean, is at a level of entitlement I have never witnessed before, and one I find quite bizarre. This is a telling behavior. As many people who hide behind the facade of kindness can become easily unsettled if a fragile projection is in danger of shattering before their eyes. It goes beyond arrogance. It is absolute fear. Listening to her sway easily from docile to angry tones, I get the impression she is both acting and believing her performance. While I don't truly know her motives, I had a very difficult time believing the piece we just heard was not performative. People in fear of being found out can become aggressively hostile in an effort to dissuade further questioning, and it is an effective tactic if utilized correctly. Fraudsters have admitted to using this tactic to bypass security questions when contacting call centers. I am not saying she is a fraudster. I am saying I think it is a form of intimidation meant to shock her audience into submission. This is, of course, my personal take on it you may feel differently. Given her enthusiasm, which I do mean quite sincerely, she would excel as a recovery counselor, a job that may not pay well, but could be richly rewarding both emotionally and mentally. In this setting, she could work safely within the confides of the 9-to-5 routine with peers and other counselors to set boundaries and guidelines when they see her mental and emotional limits being compromised. Nobody is defending the actions of MFW and Shani. I am also not here to judge Breezy's past. 
I am simply asking why she is asking for mercy, but the same courtesy is not shown to the people she is criticizing. By her reasoning the severity of her charges were somehow less damaging because she was drunk. But almost every addict she is dealing with is drunk or otherwise inebriated, so her harshness isn't doing her any favors in terms of her own past transgressions. As much as she says she has taken accountability, defaulting to but I was drunk is the least accountable statement one could make. Especially when that excuse is not viable for the people she is reacting to. As previously mentioned, I don't need to tell you why it's dangerous for someone in recovery to devote such large portions of their content to the throes of people in addiction who don't want help. But what I can tell you is that a person in recovery is not supposed to use that content for their own personal gain. Is she reaching out because she is concerned or because she needs the validation of knowing she is the better person? If her purpose for coming to YouTube is to inspire, then why is her content so demoralizing? I believe she is telling her story vicariously through others and condemning them for the choices they have yet to make. If her purpose is to truly see others recover, then berating them when they choose not to comply does not help the recovery community. It only strengthens the already negative stigma. Pull resources away from that. You pull resources away from a person that died from the rain. You pull resources away from an SUV that crashed into 25 cadets. All because you wanted to hurt Ryan Moody. And that's why I'm saying on this internet is getting pathetic. You guys are IRLing real shit with real problems and real people are going through real situations. And just because you want to hurt somebody that hurts you, you want to take resources away from real situations? Pathetic. And I Trigger warning, we will be discussing DV and some elements associated with it, so I just want to caution you. The following is a series of events involving Just Breezen today and a creator named Gorlick Bread. The two have never met in person and were allegedly engaged. A few months after their breakup, just Breezen today would claim Gorlick Bread, aka Ryan Moody, who also had another channel in the Madden 23 community, was harassing her after he sent her sister 12 text messages and showed those messages online, and either purposely or accidentally revealed the nickname of her young family member. Breezy would go to the police and file a report, in addition to creating a video that featured a DV hotline number. As stated, Moody and Breezy lived several states away and had never met in person, and to my knowledge, still have never met. The video titled Ryan Moody, the Madden 23 Gamer slash Gorlick Bread is threatening me and harassing my family. Aired on November 11, 2022. Now, listen, I am the last person to defend Gorlick Bread. In fact, I was one of the first to warn Breezy about him, as did other viewers in addition to being one of the first to speak out openly against him. Our concerns were dismissed and she proclaimed we didn't know him like she did. From the beginning, his smug, overly confident demeanor and penchant for holding veiled threats over all of his critics' heads left a very bad taste in people's mouths. While some adored him, many believed he was an unqualified opportunist whose ego far exceeded his talents. In this video, which featured the said helpline for DV, Breezy would explain for 21 minutes why she was going to the police and retaining a lawyer for a man she met online and had allegedly been engaged to. The thumbnail was complete with his full name and a beware warning to caution viewers. What she was cautioning them of is not exactly clear. The video itself was Breezy reading her own community post and explaining why she felt she had been manipulated and used. Despite the DV hotline, there was not an indication of physical trauma or extensive emotional and mental damage, other than him apparently being arrogant, cold and manipulating. While these can be toxic traits, I am not sure that they warranted a hotline. The insinuation based on the thumbnail and the description seemed to indicate she had been a victim of DV. She claimed he was incessantly contacting her sister and went on about how he gaslit and emotionally manipulated her. 
She claimed she was getting a restraining order against a man who lived several states away and had never been face to face in her presence. A good portion of the video was Breezy waxing emotional over the situation and claiming she had receipts. The worst of the video is that he was apparently threatening to unalive himself and was leveraging information as a veiled threat, along with contacting her sister. Eager to tell her story, she also declared she would be going on the platform of Yo Mama, a Madden creator who inserted himself into Gore World after he found out his longtime enemy, Gorlick Bread, aka Ryan Moody, Madden expert extraordinaire, was allegedly grifting for women in Gorl community. As Yo Mama, who, for full transparency, is not loved by the community and is largely considered problematic on his own, is a huge critic of Gorlick Bread. I believe Breezy thought things would go overwhelmingly in her favor. This move on Breezy's part would backfire in a spectacular fashion. So I went and sat in a police station for hours and hours and hours. And then um, I had a woman cop. I think I showed you guys the card last time. I'll have to yeah, get it again. Card. Yeah, you showed me Who the card. My sister, everything, you know, my mom, um, she ended up meeting us there. Me, my daughter, I showed her videos. I showed her comments. I showed text messages. And basically what she did is documented everything. And she said the next step would be um, going to Pomona Courthouse and getting a temporary restraining order. If he keeps it up and keeps bothering me and keeps doxing and keeps doing stuff like that. And then if I want to get a permanent, I'd actually have to fly to, fly to Maryland to get it. So it's going to be a process. So far, it's been quiet and he's left us alone. Yeah. This whole mm -hmm. doxing thing is getting out of control. Now, a first name is a first name is not considered doxing uh, like a first if you use a first last name you're you're there if you if you use somebody addresses you're really there but okay with your daughter though he only said half of her name he didn't even say her whole name correct which makes it more dangerous like what if half somebody tries to her nickname that yes he knew that and that makes it more dangerous so if my daughter's waiting outside how, of school. How, so how can somebody hey, find your daughter with her nick nickname? It makes it, first of all, my daughter is now online. People know her name now online. You don't think that that's dangerous, that somebody knows a child's nickname. Somebody can show up to a school and say, hey, let's say her nickname is Breezy Jr. And that's really her name. Hey, Breezy Jr., I know your mom. Or it's, like, it's just creepy to me. It's weird. And like... I don't know if you have kids, but if you don't oh, want to qualify as doxing, fine, but it's still morally wrong and it's effed up. Like nobody knew her name. Why do that? Okay. So you went to the police station to file this. Now mm -hmm. on your on your um <clears throat> on your on your car at the police station. Mm -hmm. That day. I looked up that day because I wanted to say, okay, you went to the police station to file a doxing mm -hmm. on Ryan Moody on saying your daughter's half name. And I right. looked up what the police was doing that day. You took resources away from the police station. Are you serious? I I, I am because it goes on because he you know, I, I just want to tell you. I just want to tell you. I just want to tell you what was going on that day. That day, the police were dealing with off-duty daughter killed in crash near that area. Three-time drunk driver. They had to arrest. Another person found dead by heavy rain. They had to find. 25 sheriffs and police recruits that morning training were all hit by SUV. All this was going on. The police had to deal with. And then on top of that, you go in and you take police resources away because a guy said your daughter's hat. nickname. About that. I have text messages on my phone with him talking about hurting himself with guns. He is not a normal person. He threatened Zachary Michael. Like, do you, you don't know the stuff that he's done in his life that I know. So pardon me that he's harassing my sister with a special needs son. Yeah. 12 messages, 12 messages. That's harassment. I, but you I'm also sorry. did the same and thing I, to him. I clearly just went and had them document every text he sent me saying he's going to hurt himself. Every text threatening me. Everything else. My sister showed the text messages and the calls. Like, Wait. it was important to get that Wait. on file because if he doesn't stop bothering us, like, he's a crazy guy who threatens people with guns. But what I'm saying is this internet stuff is out of control because you don't so take I police, you don't take police resources away. away. I'm very sorry. I waited all day. You, you don't, like, you, that, I know you waited all day, but look at what, the, look, look at what the, but look at what the police I, has to deal with that day. 
<sighs> that the police what have to do. You're with... taking time away from my life. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. This would of course trigger a response video by Breezy, with comments remaining fairly objective and pointing out Yo Mama had made some valid points. She has since gone on to make several videos about him with less than positive vibes. For context, when Yo Mama stated you did the same thing yourself, towards or at the end of their relationship, it was revealed that Breezy was contacting Ryan incessantly in an attempt to contact him after he broke off all ties with her and no longer wished to remain in touch. Although I no longer have the tweets, I did witness Breezy reach out to a representative or third party on his Twitter account asking him to contact her. As I followed her at the time and her tweets appeared in my timeline, something she may not have been cognizant of. When her attempts did not work, she took to YouTube to call out the woman she believed was coming between herself and Ryan aka Gorlet Bread, a person and now content creator, named Jessica Messica. Ryan had not planned to take anything public, but apparently Breezy had other ideas. This all originally came to light in late summer 2022. Breezy would take to Twitter to ask people not to react. This was an odd request coming from a reaction channel and a person whose sole content revolved entirely around other people's lives. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to leave the person that also is involved in this whole situation with Ryan Moody. You know, just breezing. We're not going to let her slide off. Here's a person who makes a living talking shit about another person and everything that she does every day in her life while she's while she's living in a fucked up life where she got all this bad shit going on in her life but she got the she got the audacity to criticize other people that's not what we gonna do here i don't know about this gorlick community or whatever the fuck community it is but what i do know is if you're gonna be a re if you don't react to somebody you but your your life better be clean Whereas people had been largely neutral or positive towards her before, this incident, followed by her request for exemption, forever changed the trajectory of her channel and the public's perception. Up until then, I still was fairly to largely sympathetic. Many people took issue with her introducing her young family member to a man she did not know in person, in addition to talking about that person in live streams and on other people's panels once again introducing them to the drama of an already problematic community. Now listen, I am not discounting Breezy's pain. I fully believe this was a troubling experience for her. What I am annoyed with is the fact she took an emotionally draining online relationship that came with a lot of apparent emotional manipulation, edited a video featuring said content, clickbait with an alarming thumbnail and then plastered a DV helpline in the description. For anyone who has ever been in a relationship with DV, I could imagine this would be somewhat baffling, if not offensive. She would plead for support from the audience, and the comments section was filled with the requested support, with some people advising others to boycott Gorlet Bread's content. Rather than confronting this situation normally, Breezy, I believe, used her personal hurt to weaponize her audience against a man who had rejected her. And while some may feel he deserves it, insinuating this was a DV situation by inserting the helpline is what I believe is a huge misappropriation of truth. If not a misuse of the platform itself. This was not a warning. This, I believe, was revenge. If your life's blood is, or ever has been, substances of vice, the predatory nature of addiction will lead you to hone skill sets that enable that survival. That skill set can carry over long past the days of detox. Whether it's directly begging or subtly dropping a cash app, it's delivering a message that their wants are a priority over your needs. You may think it's cold, you may think it's harsh. But it is, and always has been, the biggest red flag to signal boost a very real problem. Just Breezen today has had plenty to say about other people asking for money. And maybe rightfully so. But given her logic for thinking this, let's examine her own history of asking for money. 
As referenced, Breezy has previously posted GoFundMes to send a loved one to a theme park. Additionally, her Cash App has been featured in her descriptions and is present in her YouTube banner. As she has been so bold as to proclaim others as fraudulent, even while posting her own Cash App in said videos calling out scams, she has yet to justify why she requested a frivolous GoFundMe and why her Cash App is displayed on her apparently monetized channel. As she constantly poises herself as a struggling single mother alone against the world, a subliminal story is being told. Soft-hearted supporters are eager to help, and the constant influx of stories about harassment and hardship leave a harrowing imprint on an invested audience. She has not just monetized her content, she has commodified her life story. Having been part of that community, I can safely tell you that people are not just there for gossip and updates. They are a bonded network of people who gather in unification over their leader, Breezy. Sympathetic to a fault, they will support her without question. Recently she has taken to renovating her home and sharing pictures. As she appears to be doing okay, why the need for the Cash App to remain? My personal feeling is that Cash App should be banned from the platform, as YouTube itself, a medium that has democratized fame, will reward you in time if your videos prosper. In addition to AdSense, there are Super Chats and Memberships, along with merch and a previous sponsorship by Dossier. The Cash App is a redundant reminder that no matter what the motive, money is never far behind. I will leave you to draw your own conclusions. Gore World is drawn to the villain through the lens of the hero. The focus will never be honed in on positivity and goodness, it will dwell in the turmoil, the tea, the never-ending drama of the people we've invested in for reasons even we are unsure of. It is a den of chaos. And maybe the only good is the sense of community people draw from each other. At the end of the day, Breezy is just a creator and I am just a viewer. But the adverse effects of what, I believe, is the commodification of recovery and addiction, are far more reaching than just YouTube drama, and carry over into the subconscious of each person struggling to overcome their issues with substances. Her channel started under the premise of a person in recovery, and in kind, people were drawn in for that reason. Today, she is actively using people with addictions as content, with sensationalized thumbnails, while sliding into their DMs to offer support. Additionally, she has the eyes and ears of nearly 10k people who believe she is on a quest to lead positivity onto the platform, when she is reaching out to people in active addiction and monetizing her response to their struggles. She has weaponized her platform to persuade, convince, and sway her audience to her reasoning, unburdening herself to viewers that serve as therapists. She has made accusations against others and, by her own definitions of safety, risked the people she claims she's protecting the most, while shifting the weight of risk on the side of her enemies. As she is still posting about her private life, it appears she has not learned, or perhaps, is waiting for another catalyst to make claims for dramatic purposes. She states she bears the weight and responsibility of shouldering the burdens faced by other addicts, but shuns that duty when it compromises her content, clout, and views. She is not a sponsor, she is not even their friend. She is someone actively seeking out other addicts for content. It belies the sentiments of every addict who has made amends for the conflict and strife that has been caused by their vices. It is, what I believe, the weaponization of sobriety. The purpose of this video is not to condemn or cause friction. I know people in the community who are ardent fans of hers, and I am fond of all of those people. I think she has positive attributes and qualities and I admire her for her sobriety but I do question what she's done with that sobriety. Using the sober life as ammunition or leverage against another addict is distasteful, and profiting from that leverage is even more disheartening. My only aim is to have open discourse, and I welcome thoughts and opinions.